What's up, YouTube? This is 2Raw4TV. All right, so I want to go ahead and continue with this uh, top 15 shooting guards in professional basketball history. So, just to continue with my list, at number 15, I had Trace McGrady. Number 14, Vince Carter. Number 13, a very controversial pick, I had Clay Thompson. Number 12, Reggie Miller. Number 11, Ray Allen. Number 10, I had Earl the Pearl Monroe. At number 9, I had Sam Jones, the great Sam Jones. At number 8, James Harden. At number 7, George the Iceman Gervin. At number 6, I had Allen Iverson. At number 5, I had Clyde the Glide Drexler. At number 4, I have Dwayne Wade. Now, some people may be saying, well, shouldn't he be number three? Well, you may be kind of figuring out what my top three are. But at the end of the day, this is why I've dropped Wade from three as I had him at one point, maybe five or six years ago. I dropped him from three to four. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I thought it was sort of hypocritical for some of us to penalize LeBron James for playing on the super team, right? But we don't do the same thing for Wade or Bosch. We don't do it. We criticize LeBron for doing it. or pen And penalize him, I should say, right? But Wade played on that same team. Now, some people give him a pass because, hey, that was his team. But he's still penalized from playing with Chris Bosch in his prime even though he was out of position considering what he was playing before in Toronto, and with a prime LeBron James and a great defensive team overall. Not to mention the fact that when the Heat were going to the finals for four consecutive years, the competition in the Eastern Conference was very scarce. Very scarce. So, like, should we hold it against him? Well, the competition part, maybe not. But them joining the super team... I, I, I hold it a little bit against him to the point where I don't know if his three championship rings, you know what I'm saying, are on par with other guys that have won three or more championship rings. That's just my opinion. Maybe we shouldn't do that, but I still have him as a top four or five all-time shooting guard. Uh, Dwayne Wade was a really good player in Marquette. Well, when he was playing with Marquette, he was a really good player. But I don't think most of us foresaw him becoming what he was in the NBA. And I'm not trying to cast the Spurgeons here. But, you know, when he was playing in Marquette, he didn't look like Flash most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Now, maybe it's because maybe he lost a little weight. He became more explosive. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? And until it's proven that Wade or some of these other guys did something, I, I can't go out there and make that assumption. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you, you got to take what Wade did and, and give him full credit until otherwise it's been proven that hey, he, he has some assistance. But when I think of Dwayne Wade in his prime, I think of a player who in some ways reminded me of Allen Iverson, all right? And by that I meant the heart and the, the, the never-say-die attitude as far as Wade. Like, I think people forget why he was called Flash. I think a lot of younger fans remember him toward the second half of his career when he was more of a mid-range shooter, uh, maybe cut to the basket for a layup. But he wasn't nearly as explosive as he was, say, from 2006 to 2011 or 12. That way was on another level. As a matter of fact, you could even make the argument. 2008, 2009, 2010, you could make the argument that Wade may have possibly reached the same level in some ways as Kobe or close to it. Close to it. it. It was close. 
It was close. Kobe was more of a killer, mentally. Uh, but Wade was in that conversation. And um, Wade was a dude that his game predicated on mid-range, slashing to the basket. Uh, he had a proficiency to getting foul calls. Defensively, he wasn't a shutdown defender, but he wasn't garbage either. You know what I'm saying? And and one of the things he had a knack for throughout his career was blocking shots. As a matter of fact, I believe he is the most prolific shot blocking shooting guard or guard period in NBA history. I believe he passed Michael Jordan in that category his last season in the NBA. Um, but yeah, when I think of Wade, I think of the guy that revitalized the Magic franchise. Of course, he was the guy that had one of the greatest, uh, not just greatest playoff runs, but one of the greatest finals ever in 2006. And yeah, you could talk about the free throws, and yeah, they were ridiculously excessive. But at the same time, Everybody talks about, you know, the LeBron and, and 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 you know, them coming back from the three one deficit with the Cavaliers and the Warriors and all of that. But I think people forget how impressive it was for what the Miami Heat did in the two thousand six finals. Remember, they were down two nothing. Remember that. They were down two nothing to Dallas. And Dallas, in the third quarter of Game 3, had a double-digit lead, looking to be well on their way to a 3 nothing lead. And as we know, no team has ever come back from a 3 three nothing deficit in the playoffs, in the NBA. It's never been done before. I think the, the best uh, a team has done is I think two teams have come back and, and forced a Game 7. But they both lost the game seven, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, Wade is the guy that put that team on his back and led the charge for them to come back in that series. If I remember, I'm trying to remember, my my memory isn't as good as a guy like this scribe named Gideon. Gideon can remember stuff like in sequences going back 10 years. Like, like he can remember quarters and sequences. I can't. As I'm getting older, my memory is good, but it's not that good. But if I remember correctly, Wade, didn't he have some poor games in games one and games two? Like some really poor games? And then all of a sudden, like from game three onward, didn't he average almost like 40 points a game for the rest of the series? If I'm not mistaken. I remember something crazy like that. And Wade just went off, especially in, I think it was game, the second half of game three, I think game five, he had 40-something points. In game six, I think he had like 30-something. I can't remember all the numbers off the top of my head, but Wade just completely took over that series and won finals MVP. And even when LeBron James came to the franchise in 2010, it was Wade that made the sacrifice and said that we're not going to win as a team unless LeBron James has the basketball. I'm going to learn. I'm going to watch Kobe. I'm going to watch Michael Jordan. I'm going to watch all these old school players and see what exactly they do playing off the ball that makes them great. And I'm just going to do what those guys did and what is natural to my game to help out the team. And he's the one that sacrificed. So no matter what we might feel about Dwayne Wade as a person nowadays, as a basketball player, he was totally selfish in doing and wanting to do the right thing for the franchise. I just wish that LeBron could be that unselfish today when it comes to AD. But anyway, let's look at the resume. Wade wasn't exactly the biggest guard. I think he was six foot four ish. 
maybe 195 pounds when he came into the NBA. Uh, bulked up to like 210, 215, maybe 220 in later years. Uh, of course, he was the fifth overall pick in the 2003 NBA draft. That was a, a stacked draft, by the way. LeBron was number one. Darko was number two. Carmelo was number three. I think Chris Bosh was number four, I think. And then Wade was number five. But someone could correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, let's look at his uh, accomplishments. Three-time NBA champion. 2006 NBA Finals MVP. 13-time NBA All-Star. He was a 2010 All-Star Game MVP. Twice All-NBA First Team. Three times uh, All-NBA Second Team. And three times All-NBA Third Team. Three times he was an NBA All-Defensive Second Team. 2005, 2009, and 2010. So, yeah, Wade... I wouldn't put him on the level of Jordan and, you know, Gerald Wilkins and, you know, Bill Russell or Elijah Wan, but <clears throat> when need be, Wade could be a premier defender in the NBA. Won the scoring championship in 2008-2009. I think it's the only year he averaged over 30 points a game, I believe. He was on the all-rookie first team in 2004. He's on the 75th anniversary team. His number three is retired by the Miami Heat. He was also a consensus first team All-American in 2003. Third team All-American. Conference USA Player of the Year in 2003. Two-time first team All-Conference USA. His number three uh, is retired by the Marquette Golden Eagles. For his career, Wade scored 23,165 points, pulled down 4,933 rebounds, dished out 5,701 assists. So he was a guard that could score, but he was also a very underrated passer for the shooting guard position. For his career, he averaged 22 points a game, uh, 4.7 rebounds, 5.4 assists. Per game, and when you look at his NBA career, stats-wise, uh, he played in a thousand fifty-four games. He shot forty-eight percent from the floor for his career, so he was very efficient as a player. But he only shot twenty-nine point three percent from beyond the arc. He was not a great three-point shooter. Never, never was. But nobody ever held that over his head. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but Skip Bayless definitely would have. He was playing today. <coughs> 76.5% from the free throw line. And he had 120.7 career win shares. His prime to me would be 2004 to about 2011. And during those years, he averaged 26.6 points, uh, 3.9 rebounds, 5.2, no, excuse me, 26.6 points, 5.2 rebounds, 6.6 assists. 1.8 steals, 1.1 blocks, 48.6% shooting from the floor, 29.2% from three-point range, and 77% from the charity strike. And uh, for his career, speaking of block shots, I believe he holds the record for most block shots by a guard, and he had 885 career blocks. One year, the 2008-2009 uh, season, he had 106 blocks, which gave him a season with over 2,000 points, over 500 assists, over 170 steals, and 100 blocks in the same season. He also led the NBA in field goals attempted and made that year. And um, as far as Wade's uh, personal life is concerned, 
Uh, he was born back in 1982, of course, in Chicago. It'd be hard to believe the way we see today that he was the guy born in, in the shy. But um, anyway, Wade didn't have a typical upbringing. But then again, maybe he did sort of have a typical upbringing uh, at that time. You know, his parents didn't get along very well. Uh, his parents separated when Wade was just four months old. I believe he was sort of raised by his older sister. Um, his sister name, I believe, was Jolinda. No, excuse me. The mother's name is Jolinda. And uh, she struggled with drug addiction and also had a criminal record. She went to prison. And... Um, when Wade was eight years old, he went to live with his father and his stepmother. And um, Wade turned to basketball and football, staying away from the temptation of drugs and, and the gang life. Wade credited uh, his sister as the person most responsible for putting him in the right direction. Wade grew up idolizing Michael Jordan and modeling his game after him. On October 14, 2001, as Wade's basketball career blossomed, his mother vowed to turn her life around. She said she has not used drugs since 2003. Wade played basketball and football for Harold L. Richards High School in Oak Lawn. He immediately excelled as a wide receiver and also played as a backup quarterback, but success in basketball took longer. He grew four inches by the start of his junior year and emerged as a team leader averaging 20.7 points and 7.6 rebounds. Wade's improvement continued to his senior year when he averaged 27 points and 11 rebounds. He led the Bulldogs to a 24-5 record and to a Class AA Eisenhower sectional appearance. Wade set school records for points scored and steals made. He credited Coach Jack Fitzgerald as a seminal and positive influence. Wade was recruited to play basketball only by Marquette, Illinois State and DePaul due to academic issues. Wade did commit to Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and played under coach Tom Crean. In his freshman year, Wade was sidelined by NCAA Proposition 48, which set academic eligibility requirements for participation in Division I sports. Effort and tutoring sufficiently raised his academic standing so that he became eligible at the start of his sophomore year. During his second year, his sophomore year, he led Marquette in scoring with 17.8 points per game and led Conference USA in steals per game with 2.5. He averaged 6.6 .6 rebounds and 3.4 assists per game. Marquette finished with a 26-7 record, their best since the 93-94 season. Wade again led the school the next year in scoring with 21.5 and led the Eagles to a 27-6 record. Three days after his mother was released from prison, she saw Wade play basketball for the first time in five years as Marquette upset the Cincinnati Bearcats 70-61 to capture the Conference USA title on March 8, 2003. He helped bring the Golden Eagles to a Final Four appearance for the first time since their 1977 National Championship season. I think that's when, uh, was it Al McGuire was coaching them? But anyway, Wade was subsequently named to the All-America First Team by the Associated Press, making him the first basketball player from Marquette to receive the distinction since 1978. Marquette retired his jersey on February 3rd, 2007. It ordinarily requires student-athletes to have graduated for jersey retirement, but made an exception for Wade since Wade skipped his senior year to enter the 2003 NBA Draft. Wade was selected fifth, as I said earlier, in the NBA Draft by the Heat. Wade became the highest ranked of only four Marquette first-round draft picks. Wade quickly emerged as a productive player, averaging 16.2 points on 46.5% shooting, as well as averaging four rebounds and 4.5 assists. 
After a disastrous 5 and 15 start, the Heat gradually improved to finish 42 and 40 and qualify for the playoffs. And uh, if I remember correctly, wasn't it that year that Wade had like a a dunk? Let's see. I don't remember what year that was. Hmm. No, nah, I think that was later on. I remember what year it was he dunked on Verizal, whether that was in the playoffs, but I think that was later on. But anyway, you get the gist of what I'm saying, man. Um, Wade quickly emerged as a star player in the NBA. Uh, 2004 2005, they acquired Shaquille O'Neal in a trade, and uh, that particular year they went 59 and 23. And. Uh, The Heat lost in the Eastern Conference Finals to the Detroit Pistons. But the very next year, they would make a Cinderella run and win the championship, the first ever in the history of that franchise. But Wade would go on to have a tremendous career after his time playing with LeBron and Chris Bosh in Miami. He would go on to play for the Chicago Bulls starting in 2016. In 17, it wasn't a very successful stint. Played one year with the Cleveland Cavaliers and then finished his career off in 2018-19 with the Miami Heat. And uh, in addition to the career accolades that I mentioned, I also have to mention that in 2004 in Athens, uh, he won the bronze with that Olympic team, but uh, he and others redeemed themselves with the redeemed team in Beijing in 2008, where they won the gold medal in Olympic competition. So, congratulations on the way Wade uh, officially being elected into the Hall of Fame recently. We knew that was coming, and I think the official in, in, inductment into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame is usually sometime in September. So, uh, congratulations to Wade on that. And tell me what you guys think, man. Do you agree with this positioning? Do you think you should be higher or lower? Tell me what you guys think.